Hello and welcome to Flutterflow Academy. Today we will talk about something that is very important for everyone trying to create a real Flutter app in Flutterflow, setting up Firebase. Why is it so important? Because Firebase handles a huge part of our backend. In this video, we will go from creating a Firebase project to having a fully functioning setup for your app. So now take a big sip of your coffee and let's get started. So to demonstrate the Firebase setup, I will create a new Flutterfall project. I will name it Firebase. Then I will just click on the blank app create new. If I click on here, it asks me to confirm a project name, which I just did, Firebase. Then I can click next step. And now it asks me to put in a Firebase project ID. You can connect your app to a Firebase backend in this step if you want to, but we will do it through another way, which I will show to you in this video, because you may already have an app, so you don't get directed through this onboarding flow after creating a new Flutterflow app. So just say, start building. So in this tutorial, we will add Firebase to this existing project. But to add Firebase, we will need to go to another site, which is called firebase.google.com. The link to firebase.google.com will also be in the description of this video, so you can just click on it. As you can see here in the right upper corner, I'm already logged in with my Flutterflow account. If you're not logged in, you need to log in first to follow these steps. Then we'll click on Go to Console. Let's click on Go to Console. That may take a few seconds, and then voila, welcome to Firebase. As mentioned just a couple of seconds ago, you really need to be signed in to follow along from this point on, so please sign in if you have not done it yet. You can see that my Firebase console is empty, so we need to click on Create Project. Firebase will ask me to set a name for my project. Let's name it Firebase Flutterflow. You can see that it already creates a unique identifier for this project. Then you need to accept the terms and you need to confirm that you will use Firebase exclusively for purposes relating to your trade, business, craft or profession. Let's click on continue. If you want, you can add Google Analytics to your Firebase project. This might be super helpful in understanding user behavior later on in your app. We will have another video that covers Google Analytics for your Flutterflow app. But for now, I will click on Disable Google Analytics for this project, even though it is recommended. And now, final step, click on Create Project. As you can see, now it sets up the Firebase Flutterflow project. And Firebase Flutterflow is ready to use, so click on Continue. Now you can see that Firebase already opens up the project overview for Firebase Flutterflow, the test project for this tutorial. Now we need to enable Flutterflow access. Because now that our project is ready, we need to give Flutterflow the permission to access our database. On the left menu, you can find a small settings icon in the top right corner, right next to project overview. Let's click on the settings symbol. When we click on it, we can see different settings. We will have to make changes to our project settings, so let's select Project Settings, the first option. Here in the top bar for Project Settings, we can navigate to Users and Permissions. Let's click on Users and Permissions. Now you can see that I am the owner of this Firebase project, Victor at Flutterflow.academy. I also want to give my Flutterflow app access to this project. How do I do it? I can just add Flutterflow as a member. For this, I will need to add the email address firebase at flutterflow.io as another role. I need to select the role editor to give my Flutterflow app full access. Now let's just click on done and add member. Here we go. Now we added firebase at flutterflow.io as an editor to our Firebase project. Here on the same page in the bottom right corner, you can find this little link, advanced permission settings. Here we can give Flutterflow further permissions. When we click on it, 
a new tab opens, console.cloud.google.com. When you open console.cloud.google.com, you need to accept the terms of service to use it. So let's click agree and continue. Here in this table, we need to search for the row that says Firebase at Flutterflow.io. For me, it is the row just above my personal email address. Now, to change the permissions for this editor, you need to click on the pen on the right side that says Edit Principle. Inside of this window now, we have to add another row. So let's click on this button that says Add another row. In this window now, where we can select a role, we need to find the role Cloud Functions Admin. So let's search for Cloud Functions Admin. And there I can already see it as the second option after I just typed in Cloud Function. So let's select Cloud Functions Admin as another role. But that is yet not enough for our Flutterflow project. We will have to click on Add another role. We need to click on Select a role again. And now we need to search for Service Account User. So let's search for Service Account User. Here we have to scroll down a bit to find Service Account User. Let's click on it. Here we go. Now we added the role Cloud Functions Admin and the role Service Account User. So your edit permissions window should now have the role editor, cloud functions admin, and service account user for Firebase at flutterflow.io on your designated project. After all this is completed, we can click on save. Now we have updated the policy for our Firebase project. Let's go back to the Firebase console now. For that, I will switch tabs. Now I'm back at the project overview for my Firebase project for this tutorial. To really use Firebase in our app, we will need to configure a database. So let's do it. Actually, it's pretty easy. Once again, we will have to take a look at the left menu. Here we just need to click on Build. And then we will need to click on Firestore Database. Now you should see this beautifully designed overview by Firebase that says Cloud Firestore at the top. And just below that, you should see a white button that says Create Database. We will need to click on Create Database. So let's click on it. Firebase now asks you which security rules you want to apply. As long as you're just developing the app, the test mode is completely fine. So you can select Start in Test Mode. But as soon as you plan on deploying your app to the app stores and to real users, you definitely need to change it. We don't want to dig in too deep into this topic, but we will put a link in the description that has a lot of information on the Firestore security rules. Just note, as long as you're still developing, start in test mode is totally fine. But when you start deploying it to real users, start in production mode. After you have selected test mode, and you will see this warning here, you can select next. And now we have to select a location where our data will be stored. As of now, we will leave it on the default option that is already selected here for us. Once again, we don't talk about this in the video in great detail. Just keep in mind that after you set the location for your database, you can never change it again. So as long as you are experimenting, it's completely fine to just use the default location. However, when you start building your app, you need to give this a second thought. We also have a link in our description with further information for you about this, so don't worry too much. Let's click on Enable to create our database. This might take a couple of seconds, so I will see you after the cut. Okay, great. Now that our database is created, there's one last thing we need to do in Firebase before we can go back to Flutterflow. Just like a couple of minutes ago, we have to navigate to our settings in the left menu bar. So let's click on this little settings icon next to project overview. And again, we are going to select project settings, the first option in the small menu. Now you can see the overview of your product project settings and you should start off in the general tab. Here we can see our project name, project ID, project number and so on. For now, we just need our project ID. So let's copy the project ID. Select it and command C copied the project ID. 
And after you copied your project ID, you can finally go back to your Flutterflow project. Back in our Flutterflow project, you can click on Settings and Integrations, which is the lowest tab here on the left menu bar. So let's click on Settings and Integrations. And we can already see we are supposed to add a Firebase project ID. So let's click in here and Command V, paste your Firebase project ID. After you've pasted it, you can see that the connect button changes its color. So let's click on connect. Once our Firebase is connected, you can see a small green arrow popping up, just like here. The last thing we have to do now is to click on auto-generate config file. Let's click on it. And now, once again, we need to confirm that we want to generate the files. So let's click on generate files. This may take a couple of seconds again, so I will see you after the cut. So as you can see, this took a couple of seconds, but we can also see a second green arrow now here that shows that the connection between Firebase and Flutterflow is completed. The Firebase setup is done now. That's it. Firebase is connected to your Flutterflow project. If you now want to find out what you can do with it, check out our other videos about Firebase where we show you how you can use Firebase specifically in your project. Thank you for watching and happy Flutterflowing!